Hello everyone, it's Marie from Skeletorama again. Welcome back to my channel, Kim at Hashif. How's it everybody? So, um, welcome to the first and what's I'm sure gonna be a whole bunch of different episodes to decorate the new dollhouse, um, which I'm calling the Scooby-Doo Mystery Mansion. And so I've decided to separate them into cases, like, you know, mysteries to be solved, like they're episodes or something. Um, and each one is going to involve a specific project. So the very first one is how to build a secret door and how to build a wall to, to have this section of the attic become this secret storage room that nobody knows about. And um, I think what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to kind of speed it up, whereas I had the um, actual painted lady build like twice a week. I think I'll do these three times a week because I still have to break them up into a little half hour um, bits because otherwise it's it's a bit too long it's a bit much so this way you'll get to see the stuff a little bit faster so this one's going to be at least eight episodes ish um, if not nine I'm not quite done um, editing all of it yet but I did want to start getting some of these uploaded so anyways what we're going to do in this one is we are going to um, do our plan for the project itself and we are going to build our wall um, and along with these episodes we're also going to be decorating the house floor by floor by floor really um, as we go. So whichever room we're going to be doing something in, it's going to involve all the decorating and stuff as well. So that will be in there too. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy. Hello everyone, it's Marie from Skeletorama again. Welcome back to my channel. So um, this is going to be the very first. It's not going to be a series per se. It's just going to be kind of like the Alice thing, but hopefully I'll, I'll not screw up and <laughs> stop filming that. I will get back to that because I have some stuff that uh, I found when I moved that we can use for it. But anyway, so um, this is the first project in the series for the new house, the Victorian Painted Lady, which is now the Scooby-Doo Mansion. So uh, what we have here for our first project is gonna be our secret entrance to the secret room in the attic. So, because you gotta have one of those when you have a Scooby-Doo house. So this is our, um, I still have the pattern on it, there we go. <laughs> so this is our foam core that we're gonna use um, for the wall. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes. Um, but first, what we need to do is, we need to do like last time, we need to look at some wallpaper. So what I'm thinking of doing with this door, here, actually I should bring it back and talk about it. Um, so our secret wall is gonna be about like so with the door roughly in the center. This is not the final position of the door because of what we're gonna need to do to disguise the door, okay? So what I was thinking of is, um, you know, any any spy will tell you the first rule of espionage is always hide in plain sight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this door, we're gonna hide it in plain sight. We're gonna do that a couple different ways. Um, the first way is by the architecture of what's built into the wall, okay? So I have here, open this up. I have here my box of wood business. Unfortunately, what I don't have are any damn coffee stirrers, you would think. Um, so I, I foresee a trip to the store in my fairly near future for some of that. But we do have some of the pieces we can kind of use to, to sort of stand in for them for the moment. So what I was thinking is, we'll just use this. We just, we know it's longer, but we'll just use this piece. So let's say this is our wall here. So what a lot of the, the Scooby-Doo mansions have in common is wainscoting, right? So that's where you've got your panel that runs along here towards the bottom part of the wall, right? And you have your wallpaper above it. And then you can do it in a bunch of different ways. You can either make panels so you would make squares like so. Just pretend all this wood is like the same size and doesn't look dumb. Um, you would have these panels here like so, okay? Which is a very good option for us because what we can do when we do that, we'll paint it all the same color, right? We're not gonna have wallpaper and then have this just sticking on top of wallpaper. That'd be kind of silly. Um, but we'll figure out how to do the wainscoting. And then we can have it so that our door you have one of these sticks here, one of these sticks here, right? This is gonna disguise your door because if we just put wallpaper on it and have a secret door with maybe a picture on it, it's gonna be as plain as Bulgarian pinup that there's something here because you can see a line on the wall, right? We don't want that. 
we want to disguise it. So we're going to start first by putting the, um, the wall treatment down here with these panels that will then help disguise it. Um, or we can do the type of wainscoting, which is just the, the pieces like so underneath it. So it's more solid like this. <laughs> yeah. This is obviously never would be my final product here, but we can have these so they're like this with this on top of it, right? Um, making up these kind of groove panels. And then we can have those same styles of panels up here, which will do the same thing. Um, I haven't quite decided on whether I want to go wallpaper or full panel route yet. But either way, we're going to use these architectural features to disguise the door. So if you look super close, you'll be able to see that there's a, a bit of a line there, a bit of a line there. Well, the best way to disguise that is with a piece of furniture. So I thought about putting a bookcase here and having the bookcase be the secret entrance, which is classic. But the problem that you have is you've got these two thicknesses of your chipboard here, or your chipboard, your foam core here, and then you have this bookcase, which is gonna be sticking out, right? Maybe if we built it in, that would work too. But if it's gonna be sticking out, it's gonna be problematic to get your door to open. So you need to have the door hinged in such a way that nothing is gonna impede it from opening, which is why our hinge for it is actually gonna be on the back, no matter what we put in there. Okay, so um, we could do that. We can do an inset bookcase if we want, that is an option. We would have to do multiples of them, however, and, and still you're gonna run into your problem of getting this to clear the thickness of this. So what I was thinking of doing, the much easier way to do it um, is to have your paneling and have your portraits up here. So we'll have a portrait hanging here, right? So when they go in, the portrait stays hanging here, or it can be right here, right around these lines, and it can go in with it. Again, we'll decide once we see the final uh, setup of the wall and how we want it and whatever, but um, you can tell I'm super prepared for this today, aren't I? <laughs> All right, but anyway, um, so we're gonna disguise our door in that way. So we are gonna need, however, to decide on the wall treatment for that whole hallway. It grabs a book here. Okay, so as we can see, our secret door is gonna go here. So this is gonna be a hallway. I don't necessarily wanna do fancy paneling for this entire section, but I don't mind doing the wainscoting that's, that's here and goes down. And then you have the um, wallpaper because whatever portrait we do can, can obviously disguise that pretty easily. But um, at any rate, so we're gonna need to figure out wallpaper for here, wallpaper for inside the secret room and wallpaper for the tower. This attic part I'm gonna do is an unfinished attic. That will be a separate episode of how can we replicate plaster lath um, that you would see from the inside. So if it's unfinished, if there's no surface put on the wall, you know how you've got the, the wood and it's got the stuff oozing between it a bit. So we're gonna make that. Um, and I, I have a real good idea about how to do that. But that's a later episode. So let's look at wallpaper. Let me move some of the stuff first. All right, so once again, I will be using scrap paper for my wallpaper. Um, and since this is a Scooby-Doo house, it's, it's not gonna be overly cartoonish because I don't feel like trying to make furniture and then trying to make furniture look like a 2D representation of 3D in a cartoon. Um, but it does mean we can go kind of crazy over the top with color, which I mean, honestly, I was gonna do anyway, but um, so I have a few different selections here. Surprise, surprise, they're mostly graphic 45. Um, we have this kind of purple. This has little bats, I think, in it. I don't know, I don't have my glasses on, but it certainly looks like it does. We've got this one. We have an orange version of it. We have this one here, which you'll recognize as a contender for the edition, if you watch the edition. So we, it's back. Um, I've got this kind of paisley. I don't know if this is a little too large of a scale. Have this one, uh, it's a nice purple, but it does look a little too cheerful. This would be just an accent wall. I'm not gonna do an entire room in this because it would eat the entire room. So we don't want that. We have this as one of my favorites to use here. Same with this, this again may be too busy, but we do have a muted orange version of it on the back side. Okay, we've got this teal here. Definitely don't wanna use that, but it's cool. 
Um, we have this kind of Art Deco. As you can tell, I really love Art Deco stuff. Uh, we've got this kind of teal color here. This is a blender fabric, or fabric, blender paper. So this will be for, you know, the rest of the walls. So if we're using, say, this, that'll be your accent wall. That'll be the rest of your walls, right? And then we also have the Bow Bunny double dot. Um, this has a damask pattern. It's worn on the one side. I've got two colors of it. Um, I do have a couple more colors, but only one sheet of each of those, and that's not enough to do a wall. So um, I have these two here. So I will most likely be using these in conjunction with something like this because I also like this look as well, right? So anyways, it's those. And then I have some of the Graphic Croix 5 patterns and solids. And this is for um, Midnight Tales, which is what these are from also. So the colorways will match because these are designed to match those specifically. But this one has you know, a nice busy pattern on the front, but then it has a pattern that reads as black on the back. So now this, if I still wanted that pattern, but I wanted it a little mel more mellow, I can use this version of it because this is, is not going to be as um, in your face, right? Um, this might be a good one for that attic room or something. So, got that. Then we have a green. Then we have an orange. Same thing. It's the same muted version of, of one of the other ones. And then purple. Okay. So, those are going to be our choices for our false wall. So, I think what we'll do is we'll set these off to the side so I can kind of think about it. Um, and so I can also get over the fact that I went through these. I've got my big Kalax unit. If you watch the room tour, I'm sitting on the floor going through these and I finally had the ones I decided I'm like, okay. So I kind of pick, pick them up and put them in a pile and set them closer to the desk about like so. And that's when this big old spider <laughs> decided to be right there and about lost my, if I could have reached the mallet that was sitting on my toolbox, I probably would have killed it with that. But so here's me, of course, still presence of mind. I'm going to think about protecting my scrapbook paper because this shit's expensive. <laughs> so I grab the one wrapped in plastic and I'm trying to beat it to death with this. Um, unfortunately, the carpet that it's on is like one of those Ikea area rugs that I get so that I don't destroy the carpet with ink and stuff. And I'm just giving it a big headache at this point. It's just looking at like, what the hell are you doing, lady? So finally, I had to grab a smaller piece of paper and, and a more concentrated effort. But I have moved it on to its next plane of existence. So there we go. Not a fan. I, I know they're very useful and they do good things. That's great. They need to do good things. Not in my freaking house. That's, that's all I ask. Yes, they were here first. But that particular spider was not here first. I was here first. So yeah, take that. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Freaking spiders. Okay, so let's work on this. So we have this here. I have decided this time I'm going to try to give myself an advantage. So usually when I cut this, I cut it with an X-Acto knife. And X-Acto knife blades are not, I mean, they're strong, right? But in my head, I'm always careful about them and I'm afraid they're going to break and whatever. And I tend to miter everything, as you've seen. So this time I'm using a utility knife because this is a much stronger blade. I'm not gonna bend this blade, um, and I have a much better chance of, of finishing this with a straight line. I'm still gonna do multiple passes, but I'm gonna try my best to get straight lines this time. That'd be nice. Okay, so anyways, I've got my thing here. So this is my one with the pattern. This is gonna be my other one that I'll use this as a pattern for. I am not going to cut my door out yet. That one I'm going to save to the end because I want to do as little as possible so that this will be as hard to see as possible, if that makes sense. Okay. So now if you remember, we've got our line here and we've got our inner line. This inner line is to help us with the um, beveling of it. So I'll be basically using this line to then uh, bevel from here all the way to that second one and that should meet the wall right. All that to say, we need to cut on this second line here. So I have my metal ruler because I don't want to cut through my ruler. The hardest part is going to be the fact that, you know, it's a pencil line, so it's kind of hard to see. But I'm going to use the back. Actually, let's do it like this. That way I can use the top to line it up and make sure that it is square 
here. And this one must stand up to do as well. Okay, so I got my utility knife, making sure I'm right here where I need to be. I'm gonna do one pass, it's a brand new blade. I'm just gonna do it nice and light. Basically what I wanna do is I wanna break that paper. I don't wanna to try to fight it just yet. I don't wanna break the paper. And then I can go in with a deeper cut here. I'm doing my best to hold this as straight as I can. And then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna move it down because this isn't quite long enough. Okay, that's lining up straight, same thing. One light pass and then one heavier pass. And then I can feel this is going all the way through. But this here, this here. Okay, there we go. Now let's see how I did. Oh, I didn't do too bad. This is actually somewhat straight. Oh, I'm happy. Even though I'm gonna miter it, <laughs> so it wouldn't have mattered too much, but still. Still, it's the principle. Okay, so here's my wall here. A little extra piece up at the side that goes in my scraps of that. And then now we have this one. So this one here, this is the extra bit of wall that's gonna go on here. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna line it up. Make sure it's nice and straight. I'm gonna cut this whole thing here first. I'm not gonna try to, oops, see? See how easy it is to go stray? Okay, I'm gonna try to hug this thing next. Oh, and once you do, it's just like, it doesn't wanna go straight ever again. I'm gonna try to hug the ruler because I'm sitting down while I'm doing that. Okay, go back in here, same thing. And then do this one. There we go. Hopefully it will compensate for that. I was hoping to use that straight edge for my next one. So yeah, that's gonna work. Bloody hell. There we go. Okay. So yeah, I've jacked that one up, but that's fine. We'll worry about that when we worry about that. And I think we know which edge is gonna go on the inside. But this is a much easier cut here. But it's also much easier to have this thing go sideways. There we go. All right, voila. So we have this piece and this piece. These are going to be attached to each other like so, okay? So now when I cut the other piece that's gonna go behind it and we attach it together, what you're gonna see is I'm gonna have the smaller piece be over here. I don't want the two smaller pieces on the same plane because that introduces a weak spot to it, okay? So now I'm gonna take this piece here. I'm gonna line it up here. I'm gonna use this to measure the piece that's gonna go behind it. do the same thing. We got this one. This one's more or less straight. We can sand it as well um, to get it a little more straight if I need to. All right, so this is going to line up just fine with this. Or not. Of course, it's going to be just slightly shorter, but now we know which way we're going to bevel, don't we? Oh, someday, someday I'll learn how to do this crap correctly. Today ain't the day. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and do a straight line here because I really jacked that edge up. So there we go. So what we're gonna do is, like I said, 
um, we're going to glue, let's say we're going to glue these together like this. It's going to go like here. And then this will go here. And this smaller one will go here. So that way it'll lend strength to it. Um, and you don't have to worry about these, you know, if this joint doesn't hold, your wall's going to break. Okay. So this is more or less accurate. It's not too bad. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and glue these together. I thought about taking the paper off um, so I could glue foam to foam, but I don't, uh, this paper doesn't seem to come off terribly easily to do that. So we're just going to go ahead and do it paper to paper. Um, and I need to go fetch my one, two, three blocks and such. Actually, no. Nope, I've got some stuff in here that I'll use for it that's a little bit heavier. Close that, put that to the side. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'm going to use my tacky glue here basically to glue this piece onto that one first. This tacky glue is nice and strong. Okay, so I'll put this here. I've got my glue catcher. Even though it doesn't really matter, I mean we're gonna we're gonna move that, but still. Alright, so there's that part there. And then now this part is gonna go on to here. I'm gonna do it with the cut side up and the cut side up on this because again that's gonna be mitered and I'm gonna kind of cut it and sand it down anyway. So get this on here. I go right to the edges but not all the way to the edge. So that way when you push it down, it, it pushes your glue to the edge. So, so this one here on top of here. Okay, and I wanna really make sure they're lined up good at the bottom and at the end for this particular one. Cause I already know <laughs> as it slides up, I already know that the top is kind of eh, you know? Oops. Apparently that part is stuck down. Okay. I'll put it this way too. There we go. Make sure that's nice and straight. And I'm going to do the same with this. Um, I take the straightest edge, which is this one, and I'm going to put glue on here and then on the back of it so that it, it glues to both surfaces like so. Um, you can use this or you can use your wood glue. You do not necessarily want to use a Fabri-Tac or other um, solvent-based glue because it can cause your foam to melt. Okay, and you don't want it to melt between those joints. You want it to glue together. All right, so there we have it. And there's really not much coming out. So once we get this weighted down and it's dry, um, I will come back to you and show you what we're going to do with it. All right, so this has had time to dry now. Um, so here we have it. We've got our door marked on this side here. And we have our um, line here for beveling it. So what I did in the interim is I went out to the house and I took my easy cutter and I held it up like this with the wall so I could figure out which angle the roof is sitting at. So it's sitting currently at a 45 degree angle. That's important because one of the things we're going to do, I'll show you from this side here. See this? I don't want this viewable from the outside of the, um, the dollhouse, right? So I'm going to use something to cover this. So I have a few different things, but one of them is this strip wood here. So this one's a little short here. Um, but this one, these are leftover pieces of trim from the previous dollhouse, and these do fit it. Yes, this is bright blue, but this will be painted black, so it's not a big deal. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this. I'm going to measure the height of this right here. Mark it right there. Then I'm going to take this at my 45 degree angle. And I am going to put it wrong. <laughs> okay, so that needs to be, oh, see what I did? OK, 
Okay, that's the highest that needs to be, so I need to go this direction with it. Okay, so I'll put this in here. I'll put it just below my pencil line because I always forget to take my pencil line into consideration. Okay, there we go. So now what this is gonna do is, this is going to attach to the end of the wall here. See how it goes up this way. This will also help us make sure this is nice and flat. Um, it'll look better and this will match more of the surface of the other thing. And then I thought about it, I thought, you know, this is also a good way to figure out my bevel, right? I can, I can bring this line over here, but this one, this will be a good way to do it. So as you can see, this is a little uneven here. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this, I think. Trim that back a little bit. Did that work? Yeah. Yes, it did. <laughs> okay. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to do one for each side because I've got two of these, so it's not a problem. I'm going to put this up here, do the same thing. That's my highest point there. Put this in here. Take my pencil line into consideration and cut. Okay, so now I have two equal size pieces here. Okay, and I'm going to knock everything over on my desk. All right, so what I'll do here is when we put this in, it really doesn't matter which direction it goes. It doesn't matter which place we have the door on because we're going to cut the door all the way through, so I don't care. But these do need to go the same direction. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and attach this to here. I'm going to attach this to the other side here, making sure they're facing in the correct directions, right? So that the angle is going the right way. Now the angle needs to go to the back of the, um, the room. Okay, so I'm going to put the angle towards that shorter side there so I can fix that shorter side as well. But once I've glued these down, this will also act as kind of a guide to keep me from messing up my um, angle that I need to get the wall to, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. For that, I think I will use the wood glue. And I'm gonna tape it. Um, I'm not super worried about the tape messing up the paper on this because we're covering it. So, okay. So once again, I open the glue by ripping the top completely off of it. I hate when it does that. All right. Knife put away so I don't cut myself with it. And so we will put the first one on. So this is my side that's going lower. So I want this to be this way here. And I don't care that there's paint on it. Um, well, that's right. This is my glue that's all jacked up. That's why that's not working right. That makes sense now. So we use a small one. There we go. And we're only going to put this on one side for now because we need to go take it out there and measure it because I am now adding oh, probably a good eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch maybe um, to the length of this. And of course, this has been measured to exactly fit. So we're going to put this one on first. Line this up real good. And once this is in place and taped, we're going to take this out there and we're going to measure it um, against the house so that we can put the other side on. Look over here, this under, press that nice and straight. Make sure that's holding real tight to that. Do the same at the bottom. And then before we put wallpaper or anything on here, we're going to we're going to paint this part black just so it's ready to go. Okay, so there is that part. So now let's take this out here and measure it in the actual um, house and see how much we need to cut off. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to mark it where it's going to be level for the house, but then we're going to have to come in here and add this to it. So just 
be ready for that. All right, see you guys out there. Okay, so here we are. Um, we're not gonna worry so much about getting it exactly here with the angle and everything, mainly because um, we're just concerned about the length. So if I put this in here, see how this end is gonna match this is what I was talking about. But I'm gonna put this in here and line it up straight up against that wall. I'm gonna try anyway, sorry if I'm in the way. Okay, so as we see, when we have it lined up against the wall like so, we have some overhang, so we need to mark that. I'm gonna come over here with my pencil. So I have marked right there where it's going to be. I'll trust the bottom part of that mark because the top one, that yeah, that didn't work out. So good. Okay, double check it again. Make sure I do it on this side here. I'm going to go under it too, just to give myself some sort of an advantage. I don't know what's going to help, but okay. So now we have the length and we can go back and cut it. All right, so we are back in here, and I'm going to take my pencil here, Mark, which is probably very hard for y'all to see. Um, so we know this bottom part is straight, so that's what we're going to line it up with. The bottom part there, and the top mark there. Eventually. All right. go okay so I've got this line here where we're going to do this now we need to account for the width of this piece so I'm going to do the same sort of thing up here I'm going to set this along this pencil line <clears throat> actually you know what let's do this since it's the same length on this side so I can see better can you guys see yes you can so I'm going to set this right here next to this pencil line Hold it, and I'm going to draw a pencil line along this also. Okay, so now I know that the cut needs to go right about here. So, I'm going to do this. Again, I'm going to do this to where I can't see the pencil line. Let's see. Do it here so we can make sure it's straight along this bottom part. And it is, and if it's, you know, a tiny bit different, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have a cow about it. It's no big deal. It's still going to look really cool. Okay, so we've got our square here. We've got our square here. And I'm going to stand up for this. I think part of the problem when I cut these things is I'm sitting down. So, all right. I can see I need to move over just a little bit on that. There we go. Okay. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to tape that in place, we're going to tape it back out there. Or at least I will, and I'll measure against it. Okay, so I'm going to do my nice light score first. And then I'm going to try to keep this as straight up and down as I can. And this will probably take a few passes because it's a double thickness. piece we gotta remember we've got this angle going this way so this needs to go this way also when we put it on and I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape on it and go out there and see how it fits because that way I tried to go a little I gave myself a little more room rather than less because I can always cut material off I can't really add it back on 
So when in doubt, I'm going to do a little bit less. Okay, so I shall be back in just a second. All right, so I went and measured it in the house and it fits just fine. So yay. I, I love when I actually miraculously get it correct on the first try. So we'll save this piece of tape. And let's go ahead and glue this one on here now. Okay, making sure I'm going to have my angle going the right way. Get a decent amount of glue um, because the surface on the back is, is not terribly even. The nice thing is when we go to put this in the house, this gives us a nice even flat surface to glue on as well. So it definitely helps things. Put this on the edge and I'm going to push it down, wipe my extra glue of which there is plenty. Okay, so I want to make sure most importantly that it's lined up with the bottom, it's lined up with the sides. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this down nice and firm. One more piece of tape. Do the same thing at the top. Okay, I'm gonna press that in there real good. Make sure it's straight. And there we go. All right. So that's these pieces. Okay, so now what we need to do is we're gonna need to bevel this side. And let me shut this so I don't stab myself with it. So what we can do now that we have this this way is that we can now draw a line between these so we'll know exactly where our bevel is going to be. Okay, for that, I'm going to use my quilting ruler. And I'm literally going to line it up at this edge here and at this edge here. And then I'm going to draw a line on this side because this is the side that we need to cut away down to the, the corner. And we can actually use this anyways for the um, knife here. So now with this, all I'm doing with this is I'm very lightly going to cut this paper. That's all I want to do. I don't want to cut into the foam because I don't want to go down. I want to go out. But I do want to get this paper out of my way. Alright, so now we've got it like this. I can move this over and I'm going to just remove the paper just to make my life easier. Okay, so it's decided it doesn't want to make my life easier. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I need to cut this angle right here. So I'm going to take my knife again. I'm definitely standing up for this. And this we can do while these are drying because it's not going to hurt them at all. But I want to take this and I want to replicate this angle all the way down. So I'm going to try to make sure that I don't go past that top part. It might be easier for me to do it this way. And I'm just going to take off most of it. I'm not going to try to get the angle exactly perfect yet because I can do that by sanding it. I want to stay nice and controlled with it, sort of, um, so that uh, I'm keeping this line straight. That's the most important part is keeping it straight. I don't want to cut into that line at all. So I'll do it by taking this off in stages. Okay. I will definitely be putting on fast forward while I do that. So 
I'm going to switch to an X-Acto knife only because this part of this knife is starting to get in my way. I think that's what's making it a little more difficult to do this. Okay, so now I've gotten kind of a rough thing of it and I sort of went into this a little bit, but that's not a big deal. We can fix it with the wallpaper and we'll fix it with the wallpaper. <clears throat> I'm gonna see how my sanding block does with it. So I think that is about as good as that's gonna get. So now let's go and try it in the house and see kind of where we're at with it. Actually, I can tell right here it's going to be a little bit of an issue. There we go. I just want to make sure I'm flat and straight to this line and that I haven't lost any of this one, which I haven't miraculously. And that this is nice and narrow here. So like right here, a little bit extra there. Okay, so let's go see if this fits. All right, so we're back out here. We have our wall, and so now we're going to put it in so that our angle matches this way. And this will fit a lot better because when I originally measured it, of course, the top was uneven, which it is not now. So let me come around this side, and there we go. See? Put that right there. You can see it's flush here with this edge. It's flush here. It's nice and straight all the way down, so it's going to sit in there real good. It's going to glue in there real good. So our wall is ready for us to start fussing about with it. All right, so that was the end of the first part, um, building the wall. So we will come back next and we will start doing some of our prep for our trim um, and wallpaper and all that kind of good stuff. So I'll uh, see you guys then. Bye.